In this video, we are going to write the server that will connect the sender and the receiver. I have told this like a thousand times, but if you have skipped over that part, then yes. In this video, we are going to connect the sender and the receiver through a socket server. So into the root folder, create a new file. And this file will be called server.js. For the socket server, I am going to use the WebSocket library which can be installed with the npm install WebSocket command. But if you want to use some other library like Socket.io for the WebSocket, then that is also going to be fine. Just the logic should be the same. The first thing that I want to do is create a variable named socket. And then I will include the WebSocket library. And then I will get the server from this library. We will also need the HTTP. So include that too. And then I will create another variable that will be called server. And then I will make a call to the function create server on the HTTP object. We are not going to do anything in this method. Just leave that empty. And then for the server to start running, we have to call server.listen. Here we have to pass the port number on which we want to run it. I'm going to use port number 3000, but if 3000 is not available on your machine, then you can use some other port number. And then the second parameter is a function which will be executed once the server starts listening. And when that happens, then I'm going to log out listening on port 3000 and this variable is not supposed to be soccer it is going to be socket and now we can create our web socket object using the socket here we have to pass the server configuration which will be an object and through this we want to pass the http server and that will just be the server object now the next thing that I want to do is create an array that will be called users and this users array will hold the data of the senders because their data need to persist on the server so that we can send it to the receiver once they join a call. Now whenever there is a new connection request to the WebSocket server, the request event is called which has a callback and it has the request as the parameter here we will create a connection variable which will hold the connection for this request and using this connection variable we will be able to send data to the uh, requestee and to get it we just have to call the request.accept function and whenever this connection sends any message then the connection.on message function is called which has a callback that has the message as a parameter to it. Here create another variable named data and we will parse json from this message json.parse and the utf8 property of this message object has the string data that the connection is sending. And now I will switch the type of the data like the store candidate, stand candidate and all those kind of crap that we are sending from the client. And the first case that I want to check here is the store user. So if the case is store user, then I am going to store this guy in the users array. So inside this case, create a new user object. I want to store two things in this new user object. The first is the connection of the user and next is the username of the user which we are by the way sending it from the sender.js file. So create a property that will be called con and this will store the connection. The next property is the username which we will get from the data and then we will push this guy in the users array. I also want to log out the username of the person that has connected. So console.log new user dot username and then we will break from this case. 
Now let's say someone tries to join with a username that already exists in our array. So when that happens, then we don't want to store that username. Otherwise it will create some kind of mismatch of data. So first thing that we should be doing in this on message function is to check if any user already exists with the given username. So to do that, I'm going to create a function that will be called find user. And in this function, what I want to do is go through this entire users array and see if there is any item with the username same as this username. And if that is the case, then I will return that connection. So create a for loop. I is lesser than users dot length. I plus plus. And here we will just have an if condition that will check if the user's i dot username is actually equal to the username here. And if that is the case, then I'm going to return the user at ith index. And here I'm going to create a variable named user that will return the value returned by the find user function. And here we need to pass the username of the current message that we have gotten. And then here in the store user case, I will check if the user is not null. If the user is not null, it means that the server already has someone with this, uh, this username. So we are not going to store this guy. We will simply return from this method and these things won't get executed. And the next case that I want to check is store offer. If the case is store offer, then we are going to get the offer from this data and then we are going to attach to this user. Now, if you're wondering why are we going to attach to this user? Well, that's because we actually have found the user with the username that is being sent. So here I want to check if the user is not null. We want to store the offer only if the user is not null. And if it is null, then we will just return from this case or the function. And then I will set the offer of the user to the offer that is there in our data object. Then I can break out from this case. And the next case that I want to check is case store candidate. If the case is store candidate, then we are going to store the candidate for this user. And then for that also we will check if the user actually exists. And if it is not, then we are going to return. Otherwise we will add that to this user. We will add the candidate. So that when someone calls this user, then we can return these things. Now remember there can be multiple candidates that can come here. Okay. So we are going to store this in an array. So we will check for another condition if user dot candidates is null if there is no property with this key if there is no candidates property in this user then i am going to create that and that will be initialized with an empty array finally i will just push this candidate in this candidates array so get the candidate from the data and then we can break out from this case too now the next cases that I want to check is send answer and send candidate. These things will be returned from the receiver. Once this guy gets the offer for the person he's trying to call, this guy will give its answer and the candidate. And then we will have to send that thing to the person who created the offer in the first place. So check if the case is send answer. And if it is, then we will again check if the user is null or not. If the user is null, then I'm just going to return from this method. Otherwise, I'm going to send this answer to the person it is trying to call. And how will we know who it is trying to call? Well, it has stored it in the data.username variable. And now to send any data, I will do it in a send data function, which I haven't created yet, but I'll do it just after this. I will attach a type and the type here is going to be answer. And the next one is obviously the answer that I can get from the data object. And I will also pass the 
connection of the user to which this data is to be sent and that will go as the second parameter and I can get that from the user.con. This might be a little confusing that why is this user holding the connection to which we want to send the data. Well, the receiver will send the username of the person who it is trying to call and then through the find user function we are getting that user by passing the username of the person uh, that was sent by this receiver and once we have that user we are getting his connection and we are sending the answer to that guy. I hope that is clear if it is not then it is alright just follow along and you will automatically understand all of this. And then I will just break from this case and after this I will create this send data function. The first parameter is the data and the second one is the connection. And to send any data we just have to call con.send and the data that goes in here is string. So we are going to call json.stringify and convert the data object to a string. And now we can check for our next case and that is going to be send candidate. And again same crap so just copy this entire thing paste it here change the type to candidate and change the uh, answer to candidate and then break from this case now I will check for the case join call if the case is join call then we need to return the offer and the candidate of the user variable so first we will check if the user is not null. If it is then we will return. Otherwise the first thing that I will send is the offer of this user. Type is going to be offer and, and then attach the offer which we will get from the user object. Once we have sent the offer we can send the candidate. Remember the offer should go first and then the candidate should go. Otherwise the connection will not happen and also pass the connection to which we want to send this data which is going to be the current connection and then we can send the candidates which is actually an array so user.candidates and we will go through each of the candidate through the for each function then we will call send data type of data will be candidate and then attach the candidate also pass the connection as the second parameter. This here is supposed to be a comma not a dot. And now one last thing that is left is whenever a connection closes we are supposed to remove the user from this user's array otherwise when someone tries to connect back with the same username then that is not going to work. So to know if the connection closes the on close event is called. The second parameter is a callback function where the first parameter is the reason code and the second parameter is the description of the connection closing status. In this function I want to go through each of the users in our users array so for that I'm going to use a for each and here I will check if user.con is equals to the connection if it is then we are just going to remove that user from the user's array and to do that we have to call the splice function on the user's array and the first parameter here that we need to pass is the index of the element that we want to remove and to get that we are going to use the index of function on the user's array and then we are going to pass the user to this function. And the second parameter is how many elements we want to delete from the start number and here it is just going to be one. Once that is done we will return from this. And now we can go ahead and test this application. But first go to the sender.js and what are we supposed to pass as the URL here? Well if you are going to run the receiver, the sender and the server on the same computer then it does not matter you can just pass 127.0.0.1 since this goes to the local host but if your server is going to run on some other device and the sender and receiver are going to run on some other devices then you need to make sure that all those three are connected to the same internet connection 
and then you need to get the IP address of the computer on which the server is running and then replace this 127.0.0.1 with that. So to get the IP address on a Mac machine, what you need to do is open the terminal and run the command fconfig pipe grep inet. And then here is the IP address that you should be interested in. Copy that and replace this 127.0.0.1 with that address. Do the same thing in the receiver.js as well. And now we can go ahead and test this thing. Open the terminal or the command prompt, whatever you use. And go to the directory where the server.js file is located. And run the command node server.js. After this, open the folder where the sender.html file is located and open this file in Chrome or any other web browser. Now enter the username, click on send, and here you can see on the server that the name gets printed. After this, we can click on start call and then click on allow and we have the thing ready. Now we need to connect the receiver and here I will enter the name of the user who I want to call and then click on join call. Allow the permission and we are connected you are hearing this echo because these computers are very close to each other so i will just mute the audio and it is a little better i will mute on the other side too i should have put a and now let's test if clicking on the mute video button actually disables the video stream and that does happen i will click on this again and we get the stream back Okay, so this all works and now uh, let's be... Uh, uh.